I'm Mosey Griffin and this is a solutions video. I haven't made one of these in a while. So, pseudo-intellectuals, how do we get rid of them? Now, since a lot of them, a lot of kids uh, get into the habit of skimming by and reading the study guide, not the book, um, as I'm going to frequently refer to it, uh, you've got to really start early. So in the primary school and secondary school years, teach kids, in the primary school years, that is, uh, from about the age of about six through to about 12, primary school here in Australia, teach them the principles of the subject. English, how to structure sentences, how to communicate in the English language. Um, you know, mathematics and the basics of science, how to test the validity of an idea, um, what is, you know, a good experiment, what is a bad experiment, uh, what is, you know, uh, you know, what makes a good science, believe, and maybe even philosophy, you know, just the basics of it, you know, how do you come up with an idea, uh, you know, how do you follow an idea, why is it worth, considered worth following a philosophy. Secondary, which is where you go from 12 to about 18, when your mind is at its most fertile and you will grow in leaps and bounds in your ability to use logic and thinking. Challenge your students on the principles they learned in primary school. This will allow them to debate your opinions and learn that it's okay to have a different opinion. If you don't teach kids that, then forget everything I'm saying, don't ever bother looking at my channel again, and find a really good, solid looking textbook um, that gives you all the answers that you could ever ask about, and don't ask any questions that aren't covered in that big textbook. You got me? Good. So, challenge your students' thinking capacity, which is the mass, it's like exercising a muscle. It makes it stronger, they get better at it, and the more real world applications you show of challenging that thinking, the better adjusted they're gonna be to using it in the real world for the rest of their lives. Next, academia. Ages 18 through to, I don't care how long you're in there, 30, 40, whatever. This is your diplomas, your graduates, uh, usually until you're about 25, give or take. Four years of college, that was the old mantra. Um, in this case, I would like to see a system where you can, if, you dis if your teacher disagrees with you, yet they cannot fault your, uh, what do you call it, your learning, you should be able to refer it to another institution where the culture is different, not the teachers where the culture is different. Vis-a-vis -vis learning evolutionary biology in a place like, say, Texas, um, when your teacher clearly has a bias towards creation science, so-called. Um, there, if you say that your knowledge is sound and your teacher can't seem to, and you can't seem to understand why your uh, lecturer, teacher, uh, teacher, professor, whoever, won't agree with your workings out and can't explain it to your satisfaction, you can refer it to somebody else. It'll take a bit of uh, initiative to put in. However, I figure some, that would actually be a workable version of the Fairness Doctrine. I don't care what's in the media. By the time you're out of secondary school, your opinions are usually set. Third and final, the big media academics. Bill Nye the Science Guy, Michio Kaku, uh, David Suzuki, everyone remember him? I certainly do. Um, big fan of his. Um, you know, and then you got the bad ones, you got the Kent Hobans, you got the Gail Dineses, you've got the Jean-Philippe Rushtons. Personally, these people want to take it to the public arena. I say let people in the public arena tear them to shreds. And over the generations, as these changes that I've described, you know, from primary school to secondary school to the tertiary education system, which is higher learning in some places, these people, as people get more and more used to using their critical thinking and understanding the principles of things, will make it harder and harder for them to push uh, poorly researched books. Oh, and here's another thing. Create a public awareness of where to find and how to read um, a big, what do you call it? How to read big time studies on big time issues like the race debate. Notice the fingers I'm using there because it is no debate. Uh, it's been settled for years 
and yet people keep bringing it up like, oh, I just found this research when the people who did the research realized that it was a cultural matter and not a matter of race, if, and race doesn't even properly exist. So, <coughs> excuse me. There's my solution, ladies and gentlemen. It will take a generation or two to phase in. However, if you implement that and change the way teaching is uh, done, it will not take more time in the classroom. It will not require more people to fill more positions. And more importantly, uh, you can actually expand the knowledge of the society exponentially. However, I would like you to think of your own ideas and if you could post them in the comments or make a video response, I would love to hear any further discourse on this. Thank you very much for your time. I'm Moses Griffin.